Chicago Bears Now is presented by Hexclad. You can get 10% off when you use code chat at hexclad.com slash chat. It's 4th of July, which means you're going to be cooking up some good food. You might as well use the kitchenware from Hexclad. Coming up on today's show, my name is Harrison Graham. We're going to react to Bleacher Report's three trade candidates for the Chicago Bears training camp just three weeks away. So... Maybe just maybe Ryan Poles is looking to make a move, a splash before then. But before we get to those candidates from Bleacher Report and my reaction, uh, follow me on Instagram at HGramNFL. More Chicago Bears posts, reels, and more content at HGramNFL. If you DM me right now and say, hey, hit me with the follow back, I'll follow you back. But you got to follow me first at HGramNFL. More Chicago Bears content to come. Over there, put up a Chase Claypool reel uh, the other day, so go check that out. Okay, here's Bleacher Report's trade candidates for the Chicago Bears. Bayless Jones Jr., uh, the wide receiver entering his second season in the NFL. Jake Rill, who wrote this article, had this to say about Bayless. He says, Jones has a lot of potential upside, but he's also already 26. He doesn't have quite as much of a long-term future as some of the other receivers deeper on Chicago's depth chart. And look, we've talked about Bayless a lot this offseason because this is a position group that has been revamped by Ryan Poles. He goes out and trades for DJ Moore. Uh, Claypool was a midseason addition last year, but that was still after Bayless had been drafted. Tyler Scott has been selected. You brought back Equinemia St. Brown. Dante Pettis is back into the fold. Uh, and you couple that with the fact that Bayless Jones did not have that good of a rookie season last year when he had just seven catches for 107 yards and nine carries for 103 yards, just 210 yards offensively had three muffed punts where you see those fumbles there as well. Um, you just look at this, and at best, Bayless Jones is wide receiver four. At worst, he's wide receiver seven. I mean, and if he's wide receiver seven, you're on the chopping block. Like You're someone who's probably not going to make the roster. Most teams carry five or six receivers. I think this will be a team that carries six. Seven's pushing it, though. I, I don't think that's likely. I think he's probably safe to make the team, but – he has a bad training camp. That is not a guarantee. Here's more from Jake Rill of Bleacher Report. So the Bears may want to consider flipping Jones for a draft pick, he says, especially because it's not even a guarantee he'll earn a spot on the roster in training camp. If he's not likely to make the team, then a deal would make more sense. When it comes to Bayless Jones Jr. as he enters his second year with the Chicago Bears, is he a piece? And what I mean by that, is he someone that can be a real weapon on this Bears football team. We know a couple of things that are for sure true with Bayless Jones. He has great speed, and he's an excellent kickoff returner. But what do we know beyond that? Well, last year he got replaced as punt returner for Dante Pettis because he muffed three punts in just a few weeks. That's not great for Bayless Jones entering this year. Uh, he's an inconsistent route runner. He had a couple of key drops last year as well. And the Bears have beefed up the wide receiver position with DJ Moore and Tyler Scott now in the fold. And with St. Brown and Pettis back, there's a lot of competition when you factor in Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool as well. I want to believe in Bayless Jones. We know the talent and the speed is there. Can he put it all together? He's going to have to prove himself in training camp and earn a roster spot. It will not be given to him. So what should the Bears do with Bayless Jones? Type K for keep him or T for trade him. I'm still in the camp of keeping Bayless Jones because A, I don't think his trade value is that high at all. Like you drafted him in the third round. What are you going to get? A sixth round pick maybe? Uh, and B, um, I just I, I still want to see a little bit more. I want to see if he can be someone on this Bears offense. So I'm going to opt to keep him for now, but that tune could change depending on how training camp in the preseason goes. Continuing with Bleacher Report's trade candidates for the Bears, Cody Whitehair, and before you freak out, this is not my list. This is Bleacher Report's. Let's see what they have to say, then I'll react. Jake Rill once again says, Cody Whitehair is entering training camp as the favorite to be Chicago's starting center, but the 30-year-old is also heading into the 2023 season with the fourth-highest cap hit of any player on the team's roster at $14.1 million. The Bears could clear some space by moving Whitehair. Now, I've got some strong opinions on this one from Bleacher Report, but first, today's show is sponsored by Hexclad. You can get revolutionary cookware, and fellas, 
you got to talk about your kitchen because you want to have the best pots and pans out there, right? And no, we're not talking about your roommate's dishes in the sink. We're talking about Hexclad, today's sponsor. They have revolutionized the cookware industry with the hybrid pan that gives you all the convenience and cleanup of nonstick, the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and a lifetime warranty just in case you find a way to destroy them. Use promo code chat at hexclad.com slash chat to get 10% off. Hexclad truly checks every single box when it comes to picking your cookware. They are metal utensil safe, dishwasher safe, and oven safe up to 500 degrees. Don't take my word for it. Celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay uses them at home as well. Listen to what he has to say here. He says the sear I can get with these pants is incredible with absolutely no stick. The temperature control is utter perfection, and the cleanup is effortless. I love using Hexclad at home. They are also the sexiest pants on the market. Score points by using Hexclad. It's time to stop ordering delivery food and start cooking like a big boy with Hexclad. So uh, for a limited time, get 10% off. Hexclad.com slash chat. That's H-E-X-C-L-A-D dot com slash chat. Use code chat. Look at this beautiful pan. It looks fantastic. It delivers a fantastic sear like Gordon Ramsay said. No stick. And you can put these in the washing machine as well. Code chat to get 10% off at hexcloud.com slash chat. That link and code in the description and comments of this video. Let's get back to Cody Whitehair here. I bet he uses hexcloud. I mean, you know he's cooking up some good stuff at the Whitehair house. Um... I just don't think he's a likely trade candidate because in Rill's own admission of Bleacher Report, he is slated to be the starting center. And based on how Eberflus and Poles and this coaching staff talked about him this offseason, um, to me it's pretty damn clear that he is going to be here and going to be the starting center. If he was going to get cut, I think it would have happened in early June when they could have designated a, a post June one cut candidate and saved almost $10 million. He is not getting traded. The only slight chance of him uh, getting traded is if Lucas Patrick came into training camp and just lit the world on fire, was a clear better option at center, and then Poles opted to save that cap uh, by uh, trading uh, Cody Whitehair. But I just I think they value his leadership. They value his positional versatility, uh, his veteran experience. I don't think he's going anywhere. Cody Whitehair will be here, and he will be a starting center for the Bears in 2023. But maybe you disagree. Who do you think will be the starting center? Or maybe let us know who you think should be the starting center. I think Cody Whitehair is the better option, so I'm typing CW. If you think it's Lucas Patrick, type LP down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Chicago Bears offseason coverage. The real deal is going to be here soon. Training camp about three weeks away. I cannot wait. If you want daily updates, news, rumors, mailbags, live shows. Normally we go live every Tuesday, but since it's a holiday, we got this video for you guys. YouTube.com slash Bears now. Go ahead and subscribe today. One more trade candidate is Travis Gibson, the edge uh, entering the final year of his rookie contract. Jake Rill says that Gibson took a bit of a step back during the 2022 season. After he recorded seven sacks over 16 games in 2021, he notched only three while playing all 17 for the Bears last year. It wasn't the direction Chicago wanted to see him go. And look, that's definitely true, right? Now, he, def he had more quarterback hits last year with 11 compared to seven, so that's a positive. I don't think he had a completely down season, but he didn't take that next step that we were hoping for. I had high hopes for Gibson. Uh, entering 2022. Uh, I think he was one of my big breakout candidates. I I think I had a bold prediction of him reaching double-digit sacks. Only had three. Now, sacks don't always tell the full story, but again, he did not take a step forward. Uh, I don't know if he took a massive step backwards, but he's kind of just a rotation edge right now. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, hey, what's his value? Could you get something on the trade market? You look at this defensive line depth chart uh, with Demarcus Walker here, Rasheem Green, Dominique Robinson, Travis Gibson is your top four. Terrell Lewis, uh, Terrell Lewis, I should say, had a good uh, offseason program. But you're still pretty thin at edge. I don't think you can trade Travis Gibson right now because of that fact, because you're just not deep at that position at this point in time. Uh, but um, it would be interesting to know what his value is. I think keeping him is going to make more sense, kind of like with the Valus Jones situation. Um, the only reason you would trade Bayless Jones is if he's not going to make your 53. Uh, I don't think Travis Gibson's in danger of missing the roster. You're not going to get great return for him, so why not just keep him and see what he can do in 2022? Now, how many sacks for Travis Gibson in 2023? Uh, let me know down in the comments 
uh, below. I think I said what he could do in 22. I meant what he could do in 23 here because uh, that's obviously the year we're entering uh, for the Bears. Uh, give me five sacks. Five sacks for Gibson. He had seven two seasons ago, three last year. I'll go in between. He'll have five sacks. That's my prediction for Travis Gibson. All right, guys, like I said off the top, give me a follow on Instagram. Crank it up, my con tent over there. I've been posting more and more, and uh, as we continue to grow, I will do more of that. I told you guys once we reach 5,000 followers on IG, uh, I will do a Bears IG Live. We're at like 4,300 something right now, so let's get to 5,000, uh, and we'll make it happen for you guys. At HGramNFL, DM me for a follow back once you follow me.